Hey guys, I'm Akash and I welcome you all on Pavli. So in this video, I'll tell you how you can send WhatsApp message directly from your Airtable records. Suppose you have added some new data in Airtable regarding your customers or clients and from with that very same data, how you can send the WhatsApp message to your customers. Now suppose you are managing payment details of your customers in Airtable. So whenever you will add the details of a new customer or new payment in your Airtable record, automatically a WhatsApp message with the very same detail will be sent to the very same customers whose data you have just now added. Interesting, right? Now you must be thinking how we are going to do this. So to make this happen, we will be using Pavli Connect, which is an automation and integration software. Now to know the actual step-by-step -step guide to set up this automation, you have to come with me to my screen. So as you can see, here we are on the Pavli Connect dashboard. Now to reach this dashboard, you just have to go to your browser and search for P-A-B-B-L-Y, pavli.com slash connect. And as we reach on the landing page of Pavli Connect, by clicking on sign up free, you can create your free Pavli Connect account in just two minutes. Or if you already have an account, just click on sign in. So after reaching this dashboard, click on create workflow and give this workflow a name. For example, I'll name this workflow as a table to WhatsApp. Click on create. Now we can see that a workflow has been created over here. And in this workflow, we have two different windows. First one is trigger window and second one is action window. So triggers and actions are basically those two concepts, those two principles on which this whole automation works on. Where the trigger says when this happens and the action says do this. So let's begin with our trigger window. So here the idea is whenever we add a new record, a new data inside the table in our Airtable account, we want to collect the very same data inside Pavli Connect as well. So in Choose app, we will search for Airtable. And here in Trigger event, we will select New Record. Click on Connect, select Add New Connection. And then we have to enter the API key of our Airtable account over here to make the connection. Now, how we will get the API key? I'll show you. We will go to our Airtable account dashboard and from the right top corner, we'll just click here and go to account. And here after reaching the accounts page, you can see that we have the API key over here. Just click on this, copy the API key of your Airtable account, go back to Pavli Connect and paste it over here and click on save. Now, as we click on save, our Airtable account is successfully connected with Pavli Connect now. Then after the connection, it is asking us for the base that from which base in our Airtable account we want to get the data from. So in the, here in the drop down, you can see the list of all the base available in your Airtable account. So the base which we will be using in this video is named as payment details. So let's search for this base, payment details. Then after selecting the base, it is asking us for the table. So here in table, we can we have can see there is only one table option over here. So we'll go back to a table account, open this base, and in this base you will notice there is only one table named as all payment. So we'll select this pay table. So we have to basically select the table from which we want to get the data from. If you have multiple tables in your a table account, you can see whichever uh, you can see the list of all those tables here in the drop down, and you can select the table according to your choice. After table, it is asking me trigger field. So here in the help text says, create a field in your table schema with field name created and field type created time. So basically uh, you can create whatever table you want according to your requirement. But at last you have to add a field named as created and the type of field will be created time. So just click on this plus button, give this field a name as created and scroll down and select yeah, created time, the created time field type from here and click on create field. So you have to do this because whenever you will add a data in a new row in your Airtable account, then the new data, the new record, we want uh, we want to tell uh, Airtable that a new record has been added over here. And then the details of the data of that very same record will be sent to Pavli Connect. So we have added the table, uh, the field over here, created field. And then just come back to Pavli Connect and refresh this, click on this refresh button. Now you can see the trigger field is selected. After that, we just have to click on save and send test request. Now, as we click on save and send test request, it has just captured the details of created time because this first row, the details or the data in the first row is blank. We haven't entered any data over here in this field. 
सो विल कम बैक ही एंड आई विल एंटर द डिटेल्स और डमी कस्टमर्स डिटेल और डेटा ओवर हीयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल कुणाल कपूर इज द नेम ऑफ द पर्सन दिस इज द ई मेल एड्रेस एंड दिस इज द कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर सो द कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर विच यू विल बी एंटरिंग ओवर हीयर विल बी द सेम कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर ऑन विच वी विल सेंड द व्हाट्सएप मैसेज एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस वीडियो आई एम टेकिंग द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ पेमेंट डिटेल्स सपोज आई एम कलेक्टिंग सम पेमेंट्स फ्रॉम माई कस्टमर I am and I am entering the details of the data of those payment in my Airtable account, and I want to send those customer a WhatsApp message that I have successfully received their payment. So I have entered the name of the customer, the email address, the contact number, and just enter the amount of the payment. For example, I'll enter amount as twelve hundred, and this is the created date and time. So after adding the details of the data in a new row, go back to Public Connect, and once again click on Save and Send Test Request. Now we will see the details of the very first row which we have just now added is captured over here. We have the same name, same email address, same phone number, and same payment amount. The same data which we have added in our Airtable account is captured inside Public Connect successfully. So the step one of this automation is completed, guys. Now let's move to step two. For that, we will scroll down and come to our action window. And here in Choose App, we will search for WhatsApp Cloud API. WhatsApp Cloud API. Then here in our action event, we will select Send Template Message and click on Connect. Select Add New Connection. And here we have to connect our WhatsApp Cloud API with Public Connect to send the WhatsApp message. So guys, I have already created my own WhatsApp Cloud API account. So I will enter the details, the token, the phone number ID, and WhatsApp business account ID of my WhatsApp Cloud API account. If you have not created your WhatsApp Cloud API account yet, we have a separate dedicated video on that too, and the link of that video will be in the description box below. So I'll suggest you to go watch that video so you can create your own WhatsApp Cloud API account and as well. And after creating the account, you will reach to the app dashboard page in your WhatsApp Cloud API account. Where you can see the temporary access token, the phone number ID, and WhatsApp business account ID. The same details which Public Connect asks us to make the connection. So we will copy the phone number ID from this app dashboard page at our WhatsApp Cloud API account. Go back to Public Connect and paste it over here. Then we will come here and copy the WhatsApp business account ID. Go back to Public Connect and paste it over here. Then it is asking us for the token, and the help text here says. Enter system user generated permanent token as explained here, and here is a hyperlink. Let's click on this. So, guys, basically the token which WhatsApp Cloud API gave us over here is a temporary access token, which means this token will expire every twenty four hours. So, to avoid this problem, we we have a way by which we can create a permanent access token which will never expire. And what are the steps? You will see those steps at this page. So when we click, you will click on this hyperlink at click here. You will be redirected to a page on our forum. And here at this page, we have a complete detail that how you can set up your WhatsApp Cloud API account and how you can generate the permanent access token for WhatsApp Cloud API. So I will suggest you go visit this page, watch this video, so you can generate the permanent access token. And after generating the permanent access token, just enter the very same token over here and click on save. I have already made the connection, so I will click on Select Existing Connection and click on Save. After making the connection, we'll scroll down and we can see here it is asking us template name. Now you must be thinking, what are templates? So templates are basically some predefined WhatsApp messages which we are willing to send to our users. So to avoid the spamming of messages on WhatsApp, first we have to create a template message inside WhatsApp Cloud API. And then we have to get that template approved from Facebook, or should I say Meta? And after the approval, we can send the use that template to send WhatsApp message. So that in the drop down below template name, you can see there are plenty of templates which I have already created in my WhatsApp Cloud API account. So if you want to create your own template, you can you have just have to go back to your app dashboard, scroll down, and in here in step two, at last you can see a hyperlink over here. Just click on that. And it will take you to the message template page of your 360 dialog account. And at this page, you can see all the templates which we have created can be seen over here. If you want to create your own template, just click on Create Message Template button. Select the category of your template, for example, a transactional one, and give your template a name. 
I'll name it at test one and language of your template, template message. After selecting these details, just click on continue. And here you have to actually draft the WhatsApp message template, which you are willing to send. And in this template message, you have to, you can add either add a header file, like an image a video or document or some text in header of your WhatsApp message. Then it comes the body where you have to actually draft the body of your WhatsApp message. Then it comes footer and buttons. And guys, you can also add some dynamic fields, some variables in your message as well. For example, I like my message to be start as hello. And after hello, I want to mention the name of the person whose details I'm entering in Airtable. I want this name. But for every message, this name will be changing. For so uh, to mention or to send message with some variables, some dynamic values, we will just click on this add variable button and a variable will be added over here. A number with double curly brackets will be added over here. So this variable can be changed for the value or the text of this variable can be changed for every sending message. So in this way, you have to draft your complete message and you can also add multiple variables in your WhatsApp message guys. So after creating your message, after drafting your message, just click on add sample and enter the sample data, which uh, will be you, which you will be entering in place of these variables and click on done and click on submit. After the submission, the template will go for approval. And once the template gets approved, you can use this template to send WhatsApp messages. So out of all these templates, guys, which I have already created in my WhatsApp cloud API account, the template which we will be using in this video is named that payment update. So this is the template I'll show you payment update. So we have taken an example of payments that we are receiving payments from our customer and we are entering the details of those payments inside a table. And I want to send, send the payment details or updates on WhatsApp to these customers. So guys, I have created this template which says hello Akash. Means after hello, here comes the name of the customer. And you can see I have added a variable, a body field over here. Means whatever the name of the customer I'll be adding in this Airtable account or the Airtable records, the same name will be added over here. This is a confirmation that we just re we have just received your secure online payment. Amount 1200 rupees. Don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or concern. Thank you regards. So this is the kind of message I'm willing to send. And here after amount, you can see there is another variable, another body field. So basically we can change the amount for which the customer made the payment as well in this message. And we can add the very same amount, which we will be adding inside our Airtable records. So payment underscore update, we will select this template inside Pavli connect. Payment underscore update. After selecting our template, the language code and template ID is automatically detected. We don't have to make any changes over here. And then it asks us for recipient mobile number. So in place of recipient mobile number, we have to enter the mobile number or the WhatsApp number of the person to whom we are willing to send WhatsApp message. So we have added the WhatsApp number of our, the customer or the receiver in our Airtable records. This is the number. And we have also received the data of this Airtable record inside Public Connect over here. So from this response, which we have received from Airtable, we will map this very same phone number over here in this recipient mobile number field. And the process of mapping is very simple, guys. We just have to click at this field. And from the drop down, we can see all the responses which we have received from Airtable. And out of all these responses, we just have to select the response of phone number. After mapping the data, just read the help text over here, which says enter the recipient mobile number with country code without plus sign example this so we have to add the country code with the 10 digit mobile number but we don't have to add the plus sign so i'll manually add the country code over here if you want you can manually add the country code over here in a table records as well so that you can directly map the mobile number in this field after recipient mobile number it is asking us body field one and body field two so, so same two body fields guys, which we have created in our template message. So in place of body field one, we wanted to add the name of the user or name of the customer to whom we are sending the message. So we'll go back to public connect, click at this field. And from the drop down uh, from Airtable responses, we will select the name of the customer to whom we are sending the message. And in place of body field two, we have wanted to mention the amount for which the customer made the payment, for example. So in place of body field two, we click here. And from the drop down, we'll select the value of amount. 
So guys, in this video, I have taken an example of payment updates, but basically you can use this very same process, very same workflow to send any kind of WhatsApp messages over here. And you can create a template message and the variables in that template according to your requirement. So after mapping all these details over here, just click on save and send test request. And after that, we have received a response over here. This response seems to be a positive response to us. And this response tells us that a WhatsApp message with our selected template is been sent on this number. So let's check the WhatsApp account of this number. So let's go to the WhatsApp account of this number. So this is the WhatsApp account. And yes, guys, as you can see on this number, we have just now received a WhatsApp message, which says, hello, Kunal Kapoor, means name, so name of the same person whose details we have entered inside our Airtable record. Then this message says, this is a confirmation that we have just received your secure online payment, amount 1200 rupees, same amount which we have entered inside our Airtable record. Don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or concern. Thank you records. So guys, we saw that we have received, the user have received the very same template message which we have created inside WhatsApp Cloud API. And in this template message, we have added the name and the amount uh, according to the same data which we have added inside our Airtable record. So guys, we have we saw that the workflow or the automation which we have created in this video is working perfectly. Now let's just test this workflow, this automation once. We will go back to a table and here in new row, we will add the data of a new person and see that the WhatsApp message is sent to the very same person with the same details and the same template or not. So I'll just click here. I'll enter the name of a person as Heather Khan. I'll enter the email address heather at the rate gmail.com and the very same phone number we will be using in this video and the amount for example I'll enter 799. So guys just now we have added some details also record inside our Airtable account and after adding these details within few minutes we will see that the details or the number which we have added over here a WhatsApp message will be sent to this very same number. And guys, we have to wait for a few minutes. It takes a few minutes for Airtable to send the details of the data, newly added record, uh, newly added record data to Pavli Connect because the connection between Pavli Connect and Airtable is based on polling technique, which may take some time or some delay in sending and receiving the responses. So we don't lose hope, guys. We will just wait for a few minutes over here. And yes, guys, after waiting for a few minutes, we can see that we have received a WhatsApp message over here. And this message says, hello, Heather Khan. This is a confirmation that we have just received your secure online payment amount 799. So we have the name of those very same person whose name we have entered inside our Airtable account, as well as guys, we have the same amount which we have entered in Airtable in the WhatsApp message as well. So guys, we can see that the workflow which we have created is working perfectly fine. So let's get back to Pavli Connect and understand in brief that how we have created this workflow. So very in the very first step, we created our workflow and in the trigger application, we selected a table and the trigger event was new record. Then using the API key, we have connected our a table account with Pavli Connect. And then we have and collected the records or the details or the data which we are adding in a table inside Pavli Connect. Then we send the very same data to WhatsApp Cloud API to send the WhatsApp messages. So not just these application guys, you can connect plenty of other application using Pavli Connect. And guys, one more important thing, you will find the clone link of this very same workflow in the description box below. By clicking on that link, you can clone this workflow into your own public link account and use this workflow for free. If you need any kind of help or have any queries, you can ask them on forum.pavli.com and you can check public and pricing at this link. So if this video was helpful to you, you can like this video. Don't forget to share it with others and to keep getting such content on automation and integration, you can subscribe to Pavli. Thank you. Have a nice day.